Hey guys, the Network Burger here. Hope you're doing well. In this video, we will be looking at one of the key features that made me decide to go with OpenSense as my open source firewall of choice. And that feature is zero tier. It enables us to do stuff like SD-WAN and it is really an incredible way for us to connect. It's really like a futuristic VPN. It's on par with stuff like WireGuard and VXLAN. It's kind of like WireGuard and VXLAN mushed into one big thing. I really love it. It is really straightforward to set up. Great way to get your servers to talk to each other over the internet as if they were connected directly onto a switch. And you can do stuff like bridging and it's really so awesome. So look forward to that if you're a new viewer and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the video. Alrighty, so let's actually get into this wacky wild software defined WAN network and we will be looking at zero tier. So this is a awesome little thing that you can think of as the ethernet switch of the planet is what they're, they're claiming it is. And if I just scroll down, I think this little image kind of encapsulates or in, like explains exactly what zero tier is doing. It can allow any device, almost cloud networks, data centers, machines, servers, routers, firewalls, whatever supports it. They can all basically be connecting to this zero tier switch, if you will. So it's just a big device, <laughs> even though it's not a device, it's in zero tiers network, but it will be creating a VPN tunnel in essence. But this tunnel works in such a way that it allows you to add stuff like bridging and VLANs and all kinds of really crazy cool things. Now, zero tier has plenty of different use cases. It can be for just SD-WAN type of solutions where you maybe you want to connect all of these devices using zero tier, and then you can break out somewhere from a central firewall over the zero tier network so that you can manage how all of your networks actually get out to the internet. It can be a way to get into DMZ networks. You can set up stuff like out of band management networks. So all of your routers and firewalls and whatever, you've got the special zero tier IP to get into them in case there is some type of network break or something happens that you can't access them anymore in the normal way through your MPLS or directly on their layer three IP, then this is definitely some type of solution for you as well. You can see it is fast, it is flexible, and it has a lot of security as well. So zero tier is a very cool. Um, what I do recommend is please go to the support and documentation and there is a white paper document that you can read through that in essence explains exactly how zero tier functions and what you can achieve with it. So really cool stuff. But how do you actually get zero tier? Well, you'll just go onto the website again and you can just click on their sign up button and then they'll just ask you some details. Hey, what's your email address? You'll fill in the details and then once you've signed up, you can click on login and then you should be greeted to a screen like this. It will ask you, Hey, you want to create a network. You click on create network. And now it's actually going to define some details here. It's going to tell you uh, what has been set up. So I can see two networks here. That other network was actually a previous network I had set up. I deleted it. I'm not sure why that was just re-added here. Maybe some cached stuff but we've got this network now. So I'm going to click on this network to actually head into it. And here we can see it has a name, which is this name at the top. So I can call this whatever I want. So I'll just add this again as TMB lab. And very important, this network ID. Think of this as the secret password that all of the zero tier clients can connect to each other when they use zero tier. So they can actually form this layer two connectivity. So as if they're connected to each other. Now this handshake is very important if you're using a different handshake than what the network is, then it's not going to work. So the network IDs matches on all the clients that want to participate in the same zero tier network. Um, access control is very important because this is an essence where you're going to be setting what the access methods are. If you set it to private, then this means that only devices that you authorize on zero tier. So later down, when we scroll down, you'll see there's like a members tab. You need to physically click on the authorize button in order for the client to be authorized onto the network and then they can start communicating to other devices. Whereas public, it's a lot more accessible, but the issue with public is anybody that gets a hold of your network key will be able to connect. So if you accidentally leak this and somebody on a certain forum uh, gets a hold of it, they can potentially log on to your zero tier network and they can see your devices and connect to it as if they were on the LAN. So that's pretty, pretty risky in my opinion. So I definitely think 
leaving it on private is best for me. We scroll down, we can see there is some advanced section. Now here is managed routes. Now this is pretty cool because zero tier allows you to orchestrate routes to your clients, to the devices that are connecting to the zero tier network. So if I added a route here, I said what the destination is and what the gateway is, it could be one of the zero tier clients. I'm calling them clients, but they're really just machines that have connected to zero tier, then you can, in essence, access that subnet using zero tier. And I'll show you that in the video as well, which will be pretty cool. Now I can also decide, do you want this to be an IPv4 network or an IPv6 network? So this depends again on you, but for ease of use, I'm just going to use the IPv4 auto assign and I'll leave it on easy mode. But what this means is all of these subnets that you see here at the bottom, these networks, you can decide which one you like the most. So I can say 172.24 dot star star. So dot whatever. So it's a slash 16 subnet and then clients can get an IP in that pool in essence. Now that's actually quite a big pool. You can also go into advanced and then you can trim this down a little bit. You can make it exactly what you want. Maybe you just want a hundred devices to be able to connect. This is where you can do that, but let's leave it on easy for now. And we can scroll down. We can see there's a bunch of extra options you can tick. Um, here's that member section I was talking about. And again, here it tells you, uh, use the zero tier app on your devices to join to this network. And you're actually just going to copy this network ID so that the device can successfully connect to it. Now you also get some cool stuff like flow rules, which is some additional type of rules that you can tweak to make things a bit better. But I would suggest leaving this alone if you're just basically starting out with zero tier. Um, later on, you can start working around with the flow control or the flow rules. And these administrator section is really, you need to upgrade to a paid for service to add additional administrators. Otherwise only you can admin this network. But this is fine for me since we are just kind of labbing and seeing how this uh, SD-WAN solution works. So we, we've got the gist of what zero tier is and how it works and what we need to connect to. Let's actually connect to it using a device. Now, since this is an OpenSense guide, I'm going to start off by doing this on my OpenSense firewall. So I'll just log into my OpenSense firewall. Let me just head into the lobby. And then from here, first thing you want to do is just make sure you are on a newish version because you are going to have to download the zero tier plugin for it. Now, where you can get that is in your system firmware and your plugins. And I've already downloaded the plugin. It is called zero tier. So if I just search here, I can already see it there, zero tier. It tells you what the repository is, what the comments is, all that stuff. Um, but I've already installed it. You just need to install this plugin. Once you've installed the plugin, you refresh your page, F5 it, and then you can just go to your VPN and you should see zero tier here. So from here, you will firstly just go into the settings and OpenSense has some quirks, which uh, allows you, where you need to tweak a few things to get zero tier working correctly. And I'll show you how to do all of that. So firstly, you just need to click on enable so you can actually configure your networks because you can see networks is grayed out. If I click on enable, it enables the service. I get this nice play button here to let me know the service is running and I can go into networks and now we can add a network. So here I can click on the plus button and here it's asking me for that network ID. So let's go back into the center uh, and let me copy this network ID and let me paste it in here. And the description I can just say to TMB SD-WAN. Let me save this. And now we have this network, but it's still not connected. If I click on this I, it's actually going to tell me, is the network enabled? And I need to enable the network. I need to click on enable here as well. So this might be something you miss. And it's one of those little quirks, but there we go. You need to enable the network as well. And if I click on this I, I see the error has changed to access denied private. Now, what did I explain earlier? I set my access control to private. All right, so let's just scroll down here. And if I look here, I can see one device has joined the network and it, zero two network should at least have two member devices, obviously, so that the two devices can communicate. But I can see my OpenSense firewall here, but it's got these dashed lines stuff here and it's red, which means it hasn't been authorized yet. So I haven't actually allowed it to connect yet. So once I click on this, it will actually authorize this device. It will say it's online and now it will see what its IP is, its version, and it will actually get an IP address automatically. So that is the IP address of the OpenSense firewall. I'm just going to copy this, but I want to go back into the OpenSense firewall. If I click on this I, 
I can see that it is now okay private. So I can see it has actually connected and it's telling me what the IP address and the subnet is for this interface. But here's where you have additional quirks with zero tier and open sense. You actually need to go into your interface assignments and you need to assign the zero tier interface. So just add it. And then I highly recommend going into it and you enable the interface. And I also recommend locking the interface. You click prevent interface removal. Reason being is that was a dynamically created interface. So if the zero tier connection gets lost, it might automatically remove that interface and then you're going to have a lot of issues. So just leave that as locked. And I'm just going to update this description to ZT for zero tier. And now I can set the IP address. So here I'm going to give it a static IPv4 address. And I'm just going to bind that 172.24.170.42 address slash 16 to this interface. So I've now statically assigned this address, even though zero tier also dynamically assigned it to it on its back end configuration. This is just for the system on the front end to make sense of it for us and that we can actually play around with this. So let me save this, apply the changes and great. Now I have a single member. So as the document said, Hey, you've only got one device. We need kind of two to make something happen. So what I'm going to do is actually just I'll tab out of this VM or I'll just minimize this. This is a Ubuntu desktop, which I'm using to connect to a virtual OpenSense firewall. And this front end is actually my Windows machine that I'm on now. So I'm just going to minimize that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to turn off me for a second because I'd like to show you I've downloaded and installed a zero tier client on my machine. Now, this is just a VPN client, really. And what I can do is I can right click this and then I can tell it I want to join a network. So I'll click on the join a network. It asks me what is the 16 digit network ID. So I'll just quickly get that out of my network central side again. So let me just copy this network ID. And let me just get back into here and I'll just paste the network ID. I'll click on join. And if I look at this. I can see it has actually joined, but I'm not actually seeing anything yet. And that is because this device has also not been allowed yet. So let me get back into the zero tier network and hello world. It's me. And let's scroll down. And now the second device, which is also just me on my windows computer. I'm also just going to allow this so that this is part of the zero tier network. Now I know that the OpenSense firewalls IP is 172.24.170.42. Um, I could also just refresh so I can see what the IP address is on my Windows machine, but I should just be able to see that on the client as well. But I, I just want to do it this way. So dot 231.40 is my Windows machine. It's also nice you can give it some short names here. So the first one I can call this PC, the second one I can call firewall. And it's as easy as that to just keep track of where what is actually. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check, can I get to that firewall IP? So I'll go back into my Windows machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check, can I ping manually add member? <laughs> can I ping 172.24.170.42? Let's just minus T this ping. And I see that the ping is failing at the moment. So why is that? I'm just going to head back into my Ubuntu VM, go onto the OpenSense firewall, and I'm going to go into my firewall rules because I don't have any rules for the zero tier interface yet. It's all just automatically being blocked at the moment because that's what firewalls are designed to do. It blocks traffic by default and then allows everything that you define. So let me click on plus. And then I'll just create a very basic firewall rule. Again, I don't recommend adding a rule like this because this is very too pervasive. It's too, too much. <laughs> it allows too much access. But since this is just a demonstration, I'm adding this very basic rule. So I'm going to say I'm going to allow any traffic that comes in over zero tier on IPv4 or on any protocol. And then I will also just log the packet so that we can see them in the logs and then I'll save this. So now I will apply my changes. And I have one firewall rule to just allow all IPv4 traffic. So let's just go back to my Windows machine. And I should actually see my ping is responding. And that is over the zero tier network now. That is cool. And I'd like to just see, can I access this firewall? If I go 
what is that IP? 172.24. 170.42.42. Let's see if I can get to this over zero tier. Awesome. I'm getting the prompt for my certificate. And I can actually get to the OpenSense firewall. And I can access it over zero tier, like out of band management, crazy stuff. All right. So let me just close this. I'll head back onto my actual VM. And I want to show you that I can actually see this traffic in the log since I did log it. Let me just look at the live view. And then from here, I should be able to actually see the zero tier stuff. So there I can see a packet came in from 172.24.231.240. Uh, I probably should turn off the auto refresh. <laughs> but I can see that the traffic came in from zero tier and then it actually left the way it should leave. So I'm actually very happy with that. It's what I'm expecting. Now, how can we actually get to a subnet that's sitting behind the zero tier network? Now, I'm just going to do some little explanation here because I actually have EVNG running as well in the background. Um, and this is a very basic EVNG network. It's basically connected to my hypervisor as well, which is the same WAN network that my OpenSense firewall is using. And then I've got a MicroTik sitting behind it and then another MicroTik sitting behind that. And I was testing some WireGuard stuff with that, but that, that doesn't matter. What we're going to do now is we're going to try and get to this network that's sitting behind this MicroTik that's connected to the same WAN as my OpenSense, which has zero tier enabled. So to do this, I'm actually just going to advertise a route out. Let me just check which route exactly we want to get. So I'm going to do an IP address print. So this network 164.100.88/30 is what I want to advertise to my zero tier network. So first things first, I just want to see can I get to the subnet. So let's see, can I ping 164.100.89 is this uh, WG-INET1 microtick. So let's see, can I ping that? And that I cannot ping. And if I do a route print. And I check, do I have any routes for 164 dot whatever? And I see I have no routes for that. But we can fix that by orchestrating some routes from the zero tier management portal. So I'll go into the zero tier central and I'll just add a route. I'll say, if you want to get to 164, 100, and that could have been a DMZ, it could have been my whole supernet, it could have been whatever. Uh, but I'm just explaining to this device how to get there. I'm going to say if I want to get to 164.100.88 slash 30, then use the OpenSense IP as the gateway. And then I will just submit this and it will tell you it's doing some stuff. And then when it turns green, it's actually saying it's advertised the routes out. So if I go back into my Windows machine and let's see my routes, if I just do a route print, I can actually see I have obtained a route now. And the gateway is the zero tier IP of the firewall. And let's see, can I actually ping 164.100.89, which is that micro tier in that topology I just showed. And I can get to that. And this is going to be cool. Watch this, this is freaky. If I actually connect to this over Winbox, and if that micro tick was a new micro tick that had ARM uh, architecture, you could load zero tier on that as well. And you could see it in the neighbors list um, and connect to it on its MAC address, which is crazy cool. But since this device is sitting behind my zero tier network, I just need to connect to it on its IP. And boom, I'm on my market tick sitting behind an OpenSense firewall. Um, and I can manage it and do what I want on it. So this is fantastic. All right. So this is just a very basic example of all of the power that you get using a software defined WAN like zero tier. And there's really so many more use cases. I, I'd actually love to see what you guys do with it. But this was already a big game changer for me when having to decide between alternatives and OpenSense. And OpenSense just was made the clear winner because of this. So <laughs> I'm going to end off the video here. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'd like to thank my YouTube and Patreon members for helping support the channel. And I will catch you guys in the next video. So look forward to that. I will probably be doing something on VXLAN next. See ya. Bye.